coming in here today, I thought, Pastor Kevin, you crazy. Ain't nobody going to show up. And I, I can tell you this. I mean, I've been to a lot of churches, and, and, and I say this, and I hope you hear this as, as positively as I mean it. There's more people here today in this snowstorm than there are in a lot of other churches on a nice day. And I don't mean that to diminish them. I mean that to say great job with what you're doing. Because I think this snowstorm is a perfect example of, of life. And I, what I had prepared to share with you today is only complemented by the snowstorm. So thank you so much for uh, treading out and being here. And thank you for picking the absolute worst weekend for me to be here. This is absolutely awesome. This just makes for a better story later. For those of you who are online, you're, you're awesome too. I mean, thank you for, you could be out shoveling your back, singing an old hymn, throwing your back out, or shoveling your walk, throwing your back out, but you're, you're online and we say thanks. And I just want to echo what, what Pastor Mike and Ashley were saying too about finances. My wife and I are, are in a similar boat and, uh, you know, I, I, I like to be both. I like to be spendy when it's something that I really want and save when it's something that maybe she really wants. <laughs> That's money we could be using for missions, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> We actually, we planted a church about 15 years ago, and we made less money than we've ever made in our lives. We, had, we went from a dual income to single income. Then we decided to have a baby in the middle of it all. Made a, we, we made nothing. I mean, we had, we had the government assistance and all that, and somebody introduced us to Financial Peace University, and we went through it. And in that time where we made no money, we were able to pay off all of our student loans, paid off both of our vehicles, and we've never been in any debt since outside of our home. So it works. And it's a biblical principle for a reason, right? And, and he's saying, hey, do these things, and this is a result. And it's testing. I, I promise you, you will not, not be disappointed. So thanks again. I have been walking with uh, 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 Pastor Kevin and this team for, for a little while, and it's just been so fun. I'm probably learning way more from them than they are from me. But as I look at, at some of the things that I feel like I have to share, uh, I look at a season of my life that I just... I would say it differently probably if I wasn't in church and there wasn't a lot of people online, but it just sucked. It was 2017. It's not like it was a, a time, a month, a se It was like the whole year. It was just bad. 2016 ended really bad for, for my family. It was somebody very significant in our lives that we lost. And then in the beginning of 2017, my dad gets diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it went quickly from his lungs to his hips to his brain. And he ended up dying. In the middle of that, we decided we were going to move and take a swing for the fence and go for the dream job. And that didn't work out. So we sold our home, we moved. And then all of a sudden, you know, a couple weeks in, we're like, okay, this was a mistake. And we already moved the kids. It was, it was just bad. On top of that, now I'm further away from my dad, so I didn't get to see him. We ended up just leaving and moving back to where we came from. It was bad. In 2004, I actually had a daughter who passed away. And uh, she was born with a heart defect and she died. That same year, my grandmother died in 2004. But 2017 is the year that I will look at and say, that was the worst year of my life. That's how bad it was. Because I was walking through things thinking, I'm a failure. I'm no good. I let everybody down. I took a risk and then it didn't pay off. I fail, 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 fail. And I didn't know what to do with that. And, and this is, is kind of a little bit of a, a summary of what, what did I do? What was, the, what was the answer? I know who the answer is, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't connecting at some level. And so through that process, then I have people come to me saying, Gary, how are you doing this? How, what do I do when my mother just got diagnosed with stage four cancer? And I felt so bad just saying, well, you got to give it to Jesus. You just got to pray. Because I thought, I'm trying to give this to Jesus. Yeah. It's almost like he's standing there and I'm saying, Jesus, take it. He's like, no, no, <laughs> I don't want that one. No, 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 that one I can't handle. And that's just kind of what I pictured. And I, I just really thought about this and I thought, what would I even call a message like this if I were going to share it? And these are just some of the things that I came up with. What to do when you don't know what to do. Finding peace when you feel like you're falling to pieces. How to focus when everything is just spinning. Everybody been in, anybody been in a season of life where you're just like, everything in your world is just spinning. And you don't know where to focus. You don't even know if you are focusing. You just know that things are going way out of control. How to keep going when you don't even know where you're going. But here's the one I landed on. And this was actually something I wrote in my journal dated um, March 21st. And I just prayed, Lord, help me take this emotional pain 
and turn it into spiritual gain. So that's what I want to talk today about is just emotional pain to spiritual gain. And somebody told me before, you don't pray what to preach. You preach what you pray. And you're doing that. You are. You are, you are preaching to others the things that are coming out of your prayer life. We are. And if, and, and if you're going into a, a prayer life as a very common, looking at a common God, you're probably getting common answers to your common prayers. But if we're going after this supernatural God who can do supernatural things, you might be seeing supernatural things happening in your life. And it's not that, you know, we've got these prayers that, you know, and actually I took a couple of these, just these were actual prayers from like uh, kids' church, maybe your kids' church, I don't know. Dear God, thank you for the baby brother, but I really wanted a puppy. <laughs> That's a prayer right there. He, this kid knows what he wants, right? Dear God, I want to be just like my daddy when I grow up, but without so much back hair. <laughs> Amen to that. The older you get, the more you realize that is a real prayer. Dear God, did you mean for giraffes, giraffes to look like that? Or was that the only mistake you've ever made? Think about giraffes. It's like God in all his infinite wisdom and creation. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted that thing to look like. But we don't pray what, we don't pray what to preach or teach, but we preach what we pray. So this, result, this message is a result of just a train wreck of my life. And, and I just thought, all right, how would I encourage somebody to keep going through the snowstorms, the train wrecks, the, the seasons that you just call so difficult? What would I say to you? So I came up with something just, uh, and, and it's just real simple, and I'll kind of spoil the ending for you if you just got to go out back in that cold and shovel your drive. And it's four things. And I'm, this is what we do, right? We just try to take something and make a process out of it. We try to make it a formula. I don't mean for this to be that. This is just something that, that I have done. And then once we do look at scripture, I think that we will see that there is a, a model that Jesus shows us in this. It's simply this. Plug in, and I made them all begin with P so you could remember them all. Plug in, process, peace, and proceed. And we're going to look at that, and we're going to look at Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> this is when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and I want to just, I'm, I'm going to read this text, and then I'm just going to pause in a couple places and point out some of the words. This is the text I was reading when I figured out or when I really feel like God led me to and through this season that I just call a train wreck. We'll begin in verse 36, Matthew 26, verse 36. It says, Jesus went with his followers to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, sit right here while I go over and pray. He took Peter and two of his sons of Zebedee with him. Began to, he began to pray very sad and troubled. Another uh, version would say grieved and distressed. Because again, let's put some powerful language to this. Am I just troubled now, you know what? I'm grieved. I'm having a hard time with this. I'm distressed. I don't know what to do with this. He said to them, he said, listen to this. He's processing now. He's saying, my heart is full of sorrow to the point of death. Stay right here and watch with me. So he's processing his emotions. And I think sometimes we miss this. After walking a little further away from them, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed. All right. Now I prayed on the way here. <laughs> Dear Lord, don't let my car go off the road. But I wasn't, I wasn't falling on my face and praying. Here's where I'm saying, all right, that prayer is different than some of the prayers that I pray. His posture, he fell on the ground and prayed. And that's where I'm just saying, all right, he's, he's plugging in. He is not just sitting in a meal, okay, bless this food to nourish our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm saying, do that. But that's just what I'm calling, those, those are just prayers. Those are everyday prayers. But Jesus says, uh-uh, I need to plug in. He says, my father, if it's possible, do not give me this cup of suffering. What's he doing? He's processing. He's looking at the situation and he's saying, okay, this does not look favorable for me. He said, but do what you want, not what I want. Then Jesus went back to his father, followers, found him fell, falling asleep. He says, you know, he yells at him a little bit. Verse 42, he says, then he went a second time and prayed. He's plugging in again. He's saying, all right, Lord, I'm not there yet. I need, I, need, I need to be in one with you. I need to be in alignment with you. He says, my father, if this is possible for this painful thing to be taken from me. He knows it's painful. He's, again, he's in touch with his emotions. And especially us as men, I think we just get caught up in this, ah, it doesn't hurt. We just block out the emotions. And I think there's some wisdom in processing these emotions. He said, if I must, 
I pray that your will be done. Then he went back to his followers again. He yelled at them. Verse 44, he said, so Jesus left his followers, went again a third time and prayed. I don't know about you, but I think I'm guilty sometimes of praying once and just kind of letting it be. Just he prayed again in verse 44, this time saying the same thing. Here's what he's doing. He's processing until he can find peace. In the decision. Then he went back to his followers. He says, are you still sleeping? Are you still resting? The time has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to sinful people. Think about what he's saying there. He says, you know what? The time has come, guys. I don't like what's coming, but here we go. And he's at peace with it. Matt, I'm not saying you got to like it, but you're in peace with it. Verse, 45, verse 46, he says, get up. We must go. Look, here comes the Son of Man. The, the, here comes the man who has turned against me. He's proceeding. He says, get up. You know what? I prayed. I plugged in. I processed my emotions. I now feel peace about what we're doing. I don't like it any more than I did when I went in there. I don't like it, but I have peace about it. So get up. Let's go. We got to proceed here. So I've had recent conversations with, with many people. And again, that's why I'm so glad that, that you're having church this morning by, by getting together. Because you never, ever, ever know. Who, has come, who needs this this day? And if these doors are closed, yeah, and thank God we have the technology that we can watch this online. Because he says, you lift up my name and I'll draw the people. That's his job. You lift up the name. I'll draw the people. Doesn't that kind of take a little bit of the pressure off? Because I, I, when I, I got to visit, uh, I came just to, to see the service uh, several months ago. And one of the things I like to do when I go into to kind of secret shop a church, I like to go into the community and ask the community, hey, are there any good churches in the area? Well, I did that for here. And I went right up to this little place called the Butternut, which I love that name because I feel like I have a southern twang when I say it, a little butternut. And I realize I'm further north than I live, but it's, a, it's the Butternut and I like it. I walked in and I was just kind of acting like I was shopping and I just asked the lady work and I said, hey, you know what, We're, I'm, I'm new to this area. Is there any good churches around here? And she just, you know what, there is. That place right down the road, Harvest Ridge. And she started telling me about the outreach you guys do. She started telling me about some of the things that are happening here on a regular basis. I said, well, do you go there? No. Well, why not if it's so great? She's like, well, honey, I work on Sundays, but I know people who go there. And quite honestly, I got, and she named three or four people that were praying for her. And I said, so you know people that go there? She's like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I know plenty of people that go there, and they love it. It's a great church. And, but if I didn't work on Sundays, I would go to that church. And I said, well, you said you had some people praying for you. I said, I'm actually a pastor. Is there anything I can pray for you? Start sobbing. Now it's awkward. <laughs> I just wanted a pack of gum from the butternut. I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, get into all this. And, and I'll never forget. I said, well, you know what, man? Maybe, maybe this is worth you kind of taking a Sunday off and, and going to check it out. And I just got to share a little bit with her. And she says, honey, you tell me the next time you're coming back and I'm making you some cinnamon rolls. <clears throat> I may show up just to see if she got some cinnamon rolls. But here's the point of that. We never know when the storms of life are going to happen. But this just is, again, if, if you make this a formula, if you never remember anything I say again, maybe you just remember the Matthew chapter that we're looking at and we look at how Jesus did this. Because when I was going through my junk, I was what I thought was praying. I really thought I was in touch with my emotions, but I was probably really just denying them and feeling grief about feeling them. Because that's what we're, well, no, no, bless God. You know, God's not going to give you anything you can handle. Here's what we just throw cliches at it. We just throw, we just throw scripture out of text, out of context. I believe that the word of God is living. It's alive. It's God breathed. It is for you. It is for today. It is all those things. But I do not believe that it was meant to just be thrown on as a cliche because you just don't know what else to say. And you're feeling really awkward. Amen. Amen. That's just, I don't, I don't believe that. And I was doing that. Because I didn't know what else to do. So I feel like God brought me through a season of, okay, you got to figure this out before you can help somebody else figure this out. And you know what that's called? Discipleship. Because you're going to, you have this conversation about finances that you can actually speak into because you have it on a regular basis. Pastor Kevin's got this conversation about singing while he's throwing his back out because he has it. Otherwise he's telling you to do something he's not doing. And that's kind of hypocritical. But discipleship is about, you know what, I'm walking this road with you. I've walked this road maybe a little bit ahead of you, and I can help you get to where we both want to go. 
That's how we can turn emotional pain into spiritual gain. That's why we need the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ, but that's why we need to get together on a regular basis and share stories and tell of all the great and wonderful things, but let's share the struggles too so we can process those things and get us to a place to where we can say, you know what, I don't like it, but I accept it. I'm at peace with it. So here's what I mean by plug in. Have you ever plugged into something that didn't have power? Right? You trip a breaker, doesn't matter what you plug into that thing, you don't have power. Right. You just don't. You're going to go plug something in today, and it's going to overblow a circuit, and it doesn't matter what you plug in. So here's what I mean by plug in. Plugging in to the source of life. Plugging in to the source of all power. And I love the verse in John 15, 5, where he says, I'm the vine, you're the branch, you remain in me, I remain in you. I just picture Jesus and me, and that now we're, we're abiding. There's this life flow of energy. It's coming from him, it's getting to me. This is energy flow right here. There's energy going through this circuit right here. This is what I mean by plugged in. Plug into the source. Get on your knees. Get in a place that you're not going to be distracted while you're not driving and plug in. I'm not saying just pray. Again, I believe in prayer, so please hear what I'm saying. Intently plug in, remove the distractions, get into the presence of your heavenly Father. And my view of, of prayer has simply been talking to Jesus, but going through something like that, it changed it to, oh, no, no, no. This is a plug-in scenario right here. This is something I need to plug into. I need to have a clear, fully functional connection to the flow of life. And Because look at what Jesus did. Jesus went and he threw himself on the ground and he prayed. He prayed so intently and he got up. And then he threw himself on the ground again and he prayed so intently he was plugging in, plugging in, plugging in. And for the most part, he did it without distractions except those guys sleeping over there. They're probably snoring, so he had to get up and yell at them a couple times to be quiet. But I'm talking about create some space to where you can plug in and have expectations of a supernatural God. I love Rick Warren says that prayer has the ability to do anything that God can do. Think about that. When you plug in to the source of life, there is nothing that can't flow out of that. Don't, and, and, and here's, a, here's another great quote. I don't know where I stole this one, but it's don't treat the sacred things as common and don't treat the common things as sacred. You know what's, you know what's common? The, way, the, the songs that we sing. We can't come in here and say, I don't like that church because they don't have this music. I don't like that. Those are, those are common things. You know what's sacred? The one we're singing those songs too. Don't treat the sacred things as common and don't treat the common things as sacred. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because prayer is one of those things that if we're going to a common God, praying common prayers, we're probably going to get common results. But if we go to a supernatural God that we believe that we're plugged into, that we believe has the ability to do anything and everything that we ask and even more, I bet you might get some supernatural results. Charles Stanley says this, the single most important thing in your walk with Jesus is your prayer life because everything else flows from that. You want to talk about your finances? Let's talk about your prayer life. You want to talk about your marriage? Let's talk about your prayer life. You want to talk about your, 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 your habits? Let's talk about your prayer life. Everything right. flows out of your prayer life. And when we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, the same, this fires me up every time I get to say it. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in me. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead takes residence us according to Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. He becomes this direct line of communication when we plug in. So after we plug in, what do we do? We process. And I think this is where some churches can really miss it because we don't know what to say. We've really got to get in there. We've really got to get in. That's what I love. One of the many things I love about your pastor, he's going to, just going to call it the way it is. You know what? That just sucks. Nope. You know what? That's just a hard thing you're going through right there. You know what? I don't know what I would do in that situation. You know what? And he's just going to call it because sometimes we just feel like we've got to hide it because if we say it, it's going to be less spiritual. You know what? Processing this stuff is very spiritual. And, and, a, and an unhealed wound is undefeated. You know what's going to happen to an unhealed wound? It's going to keep coming up in different ways. You know, some of the things that happen to us as children and into our adult life, those are the things we just learn to survive. That's really what we do. 
But an unhealed wound is undefeated. It's going to come out, and it's going to come out in an unhealthy way if we don't learn to deal with it in, an, in a healthy way. Process is about asking, what do I want that I don't have? What do I need? I need to process the emotions. I need to identify the feelings. I need to express the pain and maybe even name the hurt. Admit that you're finding more comfort in a bottle or in food or on the internet than you are in Jesus. Just say it. Jesus, you know what? I don't feel comfortable in your presence right now. You know what? I find more comfort in that bottle. I find more comfort, comfort in that relationship. I find more comfort in the internet thing that I'm looking at right here. Say it. He knows it anyway. But bringing it out into the light, now the enemy isn't going to use it as grief and shame. Now we can deal with it because you're processing it, because you're aware of it. And listen, I'm not saying just saying it out loud is going to heal it. I'm not. And I believe that there are times for professional counseling, and I've taken part in professional counseling a lot in my life. And I believe there's time for that. But I think a lot of the things that they've asked me to do is just, hey, what are you feeling? Let's, call, let's talk about it. Let's, let's figure out where it came from, and let's name it, and let's pray about it, and let's move on. So that's kind of what I've learned here. Even, even just figuring out my, my vice has always been just like sweets. I, you put a thing of cake and donuts in front of me, I am like a little kid. I'm going to get all that. I'm gonna, I don't even care about you know, appearance at that point. Glaze is going to be in my hair. I'm going to have icing on my shirt. I'm just a mess. But during this season, I realized that I was overeating. I was eating my feelings because I wasn't processing them in a healthy way. And then through therapy, and let's just call it what it is, I went to therapy. And she helped me realize that you're eating because you're not processing your emotions. And then she helped me tie it to where that came from. When I'm eating comfort food, it's comforting. Why do they call it that? I need and I feel like I need nurturing. Well, sweets is a connection. And again, my dad was dying during that time. Sweets was a connection to my dad because we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So if we had dessert, the whole family was together around sweets. And then we go to a birthday party. Guess what? The whole family's together around the cake. Then we have a party and then somebody graduates and the whole family's around another cake and cupcakes. And it's make your own cupcakes. And it's just sweets everywhere. We celebrate something, sweets. But I was, tra I was putting it on sweets instead of family. And she helped me see that. That when, you're, when you feel like you need comforted, you really need family. So now when I'm driving home craving a cupcake, hey girls, come on. It's family game night. And that creates this nurturing that I really, really need. I don't need the cupcake. I need nurturing. And somebody shared with me this, too, is that when, you, when you're craving, this, this may be a little bit of psychology. It may not be true for you. But when you're craving sweets, typically maybe you need nurtured. But when you're craving, like, crunchy or salty, it means you're internalizing anger. So maybe you pay attention to that. If you're, if you're one of those that you just like to crunch something, yesterday we went to shoot guns. Man, I feel a lot better now. I got a lot of aggression out, and every one of them bullets had a name. <laughs> See, I'm processing. <laughs> I feel better just saying it. I didn't say your name, and they're not watching, and even if they were, they wouldn't know. <laughs> but here's what I say. Don't pray how to process. Process what you hear in prayer. Don't pray how to process. Process what you hear in prayer. So after you plug in, after you process, how do we turn emotional pain into spiritual gain? We have to go for peace. We have to look for peace. Luke 22, 43, in, a, in, a, in a, a version of that, it says, an angel of the Lord comforted him. Peace doesn't, here's a, here's a great statement, and you might disagree with it when you initially hear it, but hear it again. Peace doesn't come from praying. Pray, peace comes from his presence. Plugging in is about getting into his presence. So peace isn't where I find, praying isn't where I find the peace. Peace comes from his presence. That my, Praying gets me into his presence, but the peace comes from his presence. Plugging in is a way to get me into his presence. So peace doesn't come from praying. Peace comes from his presence. Luke twenty two forty four. 44, he says, sweats of drops of blood. He sweat drops of blood. One of the other things that, that kind of helped me as I was processing and having to find peace is through the processing, I realized that I have this unhealthy, and listen, unhealthy need for approval from women because my biological mother left me and I don't know her. And then here comes my dad dating this woman and I think, oh, if I'm good, she'll stay. That doesn't have anything to do with me being good. She stayed, so now what do I think? Oh, I gotta be, keep being good. I gotta keep doing, it. and I've got, how good is God? I need this women's approval. My mother leaves me. My stepmother is the best in the world. She's, she's my mom. 
She accepts me as her own. But I always felt like I needed to gain her approval. To no fault of her own, this was me. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. I behaved like a child. Problem is, when I became a man, I didn't put away childish behaviors because it taught me how to survive. So now I'm processing things and I, these things are coming up. And now I'm finding peace with it to where I don't now need women's approval. Because what happens if I, I, my, my mother leaves, my stepmother comes in, I have three sisters. Dear Lord, try to please four women in a house. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then I get married and I couldn't please that woman. She ends up leaving. She leaves me with a five-year-old little girl. Now I feel like a failure for that little girl. I need female approval and I'm failing all the females in my life. I had to come to peace. I had to, I had to find that out because that was an unhealed wound. And I had to find that out. I had to figure that out. Now, I don't feel like I need anybody's approval and I'm not going to comfort food to comfort me. I'm finding peace, I'm plugging in, I'm processing these emotions, I'm aware of them, and then I'm finding peace. And what is Jesus doing? He's saying, hey, Lord, God, not my will, but yours be done. And he kept saying it. And I, and I love this statement too. Somebody said that, that praying and fasting isn't trying to get God in alignment with you. Because I think sometimes we become, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, I behaved like a child. If I hold my breath long enough, I'm going to get what I want. Sometimes I think people do that with fasting. If I just don't eat long enough, God's going to answer this prayer. So fasting isn't about getting God in alignment with me. It's getting me in alignment with God. And I can do that through plugging in. I can process my feelings and emotions. And then I can find peace in his presence. And then you know what we do? We get up. We proceed. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do when you're going through it is get up. If you've ever gone through and I don't want to, I don't want to say I've been through depression because I just don't know. I think I was. I did not want to get out of bed. I would stare at the ceiling. My wife was looking at me saying, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on. I had to just get up. I had to just get up. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is just get up. Amen. So get up. Get around people that are going to love you. Get around people that are, aren't going to just throw a cliche at you. That's why you need small groups. That's why you need the Sunday morning experience. That's why you need to have music to just take the focus off of you and put it on him. Yes. This whole thing is about hear from God and respond obediently. Any environment that we can be in to help us do that is going to help us plug in. It's going to help us process. It's going to help us find peace. And it's going to help us proceed. And then you know what's going to happen? God's going to bring a lot of people around you that you're going to help them walk through this thing. I remember just, the, the, and I'll, I'll end with this story. <clears throat> I, I, Psalms 23 is one of the most quoted. And, and here's the perspective change. Listen to this. Psalm 23, it goes from he to you. Watch what he does here. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets, he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside, beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right path. He, this is all about bringing honor to his name. And then look what he did in verse four. It went from third person he to you. Even though I walk through the valley of death, I will not be afraid for you are close. He, you know what he's doing? He's saying, uh -uh, I'm going from talking about him I'm going to start talking to him. Yeah. I'm not going to stand up here and talk about God. I'm going to stand. I, I want to talk to God. I can talk to you about him. But the best thing for you to do is start talking to him. It shifts from he to you. He says, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod, your staff protects and comforts me. It's not the food. It's not the bottle. It's not the Internet. It's not all that stuff. You do this. It goes from being third person to first person. When you can shift from third person, oh, God can, God can. No, no, no. I believe, Lord, you can do this. When I'm in the valley, you know it's in the valley, darkness. But you know what? Jesus says, I'm the light. I'm the light of this world. You need the light to have a darkness. You need, you need the light to have a shadow, right? So don't stop. John 10, 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. See, that's an action word right there. That's get up. That's proceed. That's, right. that's movement. That's action. So don't pray how to proceed. Proceed based on what you hear in prayer. Yeah. So to turn emotional pain into spiritual gain, we got to plug in. 
We got a process. We find peace. And then we proceed. Father, I thank you so much just for, Lord, these trials in our lives, for these snowstorms, for these train wrecks, for these seasons of, of the valley of darkness and disparity, Lord. But we know that you are with us. We know that the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, Lord. We know that you are the vine. We are the branch. We remain in you. You will remain in us. And we will bear fruit. Lord, if we, any of us lack fruit, that peace, that love and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. We know where that comes from. It comes from an abiding, plugged-in relationship with you. That if we lack any of those, Lord, may we check our connection and re-plug in today. That we would process our feelings and emotions. That we would find peace and that we would proceed in a way that's going to bring you all the glory. All the praise. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for letting me be here this morning.